Dr. Riley, thank you for joining me today. Can you explain to our viewers what is medical assisted treatment and how is it helping those with opioid use disorder? One of the most powerful tools that we have in our toolbox right now uh, for treating opioid use disorder and all substance use disorders is something called medication assisted treatment. Um, we'll probably call it MAT for short. And what it's really talking about is using medications in combination with counseling and behavioral therapy techniques to provide a whole person approach to treatment of addictions. You mentioned providers treating the whole person. What do you mean by that? You know, in our healthcare system, we have a long history of separating out the parts of people. We're all one person, um, yet you go one place to get your physical ailments taken care of, you go another place to get your mental health issues taken care of. And when we're talking about addiction, you sometimes have to go to yet another place for substance use disorder or addiction treatment. And we, we know that this is just not an effective, we know that, right? We are one person and we're all integrated. So we know that if we have this whole person, that we're going to be far more effective in helping people achieve long-term recovery. Is being on medication-assisted treatment something that should be lifelong? Mm, it's a good question. You know, one of the most important pieces of this is thinking about addiction as a chronic disease. So, for example, if you have hypertension, you're going to come to the doctor, you're going to get medication. Some would say you're getting medication-assisted treatment for hypertension. Um, and in addition to that, you're going to get recommendations for exercise, for healthy eating, reducing the salt in your diet. And the same is really true for addiction treatment. You can come and we'll give you the medication, which will assist your treatment in the ways that we talked about. There is such a stigma around medication-assisted therapy and around addiction treatment. And as a provider, it's really frustrating. You know, we don't judge people when we give them medications for their high blood pressure or give them insulin for their diabetes, yet they're there's this stigma um, and such judgment around medications for addiction. People who have an addiction can learn to live with their addiction, just like people with diabetes and hypertension learn to live with their disease. So how critical are primary care providers to fighting the opioid epidemic? Um, I think they're, uh, they are absolutely critical. And then there's the relationship. So primary care providers have a long-standing trust relationship with patients. You know, they're there with them through the good times and the bad. And just kind of following up on that, how can a primary care provider obtain a waiver so they can prescribe medication-assisted treatment? So getting the waiver is actually probably the easiest part. Um, in the, Physicians are required to do eight hours of training, all of which is available online now, um, and then can apply to the DEA to get their X waiver um, added to their, um, their DEA number. I think the more difficult part is feeling um, empowered to do it and feeling like you have the resources to do it. And there are some really incredible resources available now. And I just take a moment to mention the Provider Clinical Support System, PCSS, uh, which is supported by SAMHSA. Um, PCSSnow.org is the website, and it gives pro uh, primary care providers all kinds of resources and tools for learning about treating um, substance use disorder in their primary care practice.